All right, welcome back to the channel. And today we're actually gonna be taking a look at, of course, our Ryzen 9 5000, but we're gonna see if you should use this stock AMD cooler. This one came off of a 2400G that I have purchased for a customer maybe a year ago. And of course, when they upgraded, I kept their old one because they have no need for it. And they said, hey, keep it. So yeah, it becomes my problem now. So I purchased this and deciding what CPU cooler I could use and want to see if I could use this. Well, not long term, just want to see if I could use it. So is this a bad idea or is it a good idea? Well, let's take a look. Let's do some CPU stress testing on it. Let's talk about it and find out if there's a particular reason why AMD doesn't give you this cooler when you buy their 5000 series GPU. All right, so let's switch to the bench. All right, so we set it on a bench test, and just looking at it and just kind of giving you some information on this, the AMD stock Ryzen CPU coolers, I believe, are rated only for 65 watts, if I'm not, maybe a little higher, don't quote me, but I believe it's 65, and this CPU is rated for 105, and even if this was rated higher at 85 or 95, but I believe this is 65, uh, yeah not ideal situation now typically when they put these on the lower model and cpus or the typical factory ones you're not going to be doing any overclocking with it um, if you try to do some overclocking you're going to get some thermal throttling and you might even reach the thermal limit where the computer will shut down just to preserve the cpu so just for fun i want to see how it works over here do we set my 600 dollars cpu on fire or does it work pretty good so Let's go ahead, let's pop it in, and let's see what it does. Let's get some uh, B4s, and then what we'll do is we'll see if a better CPU cooler, which obviously it will, will kind of help cool it down. So let's focus on this one, and then we'll talk about the next one. Uh, I'll be using a thermal pad, so between the two tests from the stock AMD Ryzen fan and the one that we'll be using next, we'll be using our thermal pad from Thermal Grizzly just to show kind of consistency and that way there's not an argument of well maybe I use more thermal paste on this one less thermal paste but let's just keep that baseline consistent so let's pop this in let's get this thing going and let's see what our temperatures are all right so I don't know if this comes in the camera maybe I can move this over here but we've been doing this test for over five minutes our CPU is just staying steady at 90 degrees, which is pretty warm for my 5900X. Our max spike was 91 degrees, and it's just kind of sitting there. It's been over five minutes, so we're going on six minutes right now. So it spiked up to 90 degrees, like, instantly. Uh, my idle temps when I turn this thing on, because remember, we're using a stock AMD, and we're going to do a separate CPU, a separate video on that. We're using a stock AMD Ryzen CPU cooler, open bench, and all that stuff, and it is kind of cooler in my garage. All right, so... For comparison, we're going to be using this Dark Rock Slim, 180 watt TDP. This is a lot better, a lot beefier of a cooler that should get the job done for a 5900X. So I'm going to be doing a separate video on review and assembly, putting it together, unboxing, all that stuff. But just to kind of give you the gist of it, it has four heat pipes, 120 millimeter fan. It's a lot beefier, heavier, dutier, and it's going to work great so this is what we're going to be using we're going to go ahead we're going to install it in here we're going to run our test one more time and we're going to see will this help tame that 5900x and kind of show the differences between this puny weak sauce cpu fan and this beefy one so there are beefier versions of this like the dark rock pro 4 but i think this would work for the budget enthusiast for 60 dollars, i believe it would get the job done so let's pop this up we'll take a look and we'll be right back All right, so let's take a look at our temps and our Be Quiet Dark Rock or Dark Rock Slim, whatever one is called, I forget, there's so many of them, is already installed. So our idle temps right now is 30 degrees C Celsius. We are running factory settings all out of the box before uh, for both tests, for the stock AMD Ryzen 1 and for the Be Quiet one. So this is stock settings for this 5900. I haven't tweaked anything, haven't overclocked, haven't done nothing like that. This is just... I've installed it, I'm putting it in, and I want to run it. And sitting idle, we're at 30 degrees C, uh, 30 degrees Celsius on an open test bench. Before, 
we were sitting about 39, 40, and we even had occasional spikes up to 63 just opening programs. Now it says 78 over here because I went ahead and did a heat soak test on it just to kind of cure everything and just kind of get everything settled and just kind of give a more real world situation instead of a cold CPU. So we're at 30 degrees Celsius, looks good. Let's go ahead, let's run a stress test on it since we've kind of heat soaked and we'll just see where it spikes up to. All right, so we're popping up to 100% CPU usage. And as you can see, our temperatures were at 65, 68. And I think about after five minutes, it's gonna settle about 78 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good considering that AIDA64 does a really, really, really good job stress testing it, in my opinion. I mean, there are other ones, but I find this one to work good. Also, when I'm trying to make sure I have a CPU that's good enough for somebody to purchase. So 74. So I'm just going to call it and say that it's going to spike up to 78. It might spike up a little lower on this. So, I mean, but 78 is going to be realistic. I mean, we're only 30 seconds in and we're at 74 or 75 when before we were hitting 91 degrees. So we're looking at a 13 degree difference, which is huge in comparison from using that stock Ryzen one to this. So let's talk about it real quick. You can see this heat sink. It's, it's small, it's, it's, it, that's about it. It's noisier, it's not efficient, and it's great if you're gonna be running one of these non-overclocking CPUs and if you're just gonna use one of the lower models, Ryzen 5, 3600, yada, yada, this will get the job done, it will suffice. But for one of these beefier ones like the 5900 and 5950X, you're gonna to need to upgrade to something more serious. Some people will say you probably need a uh, 360 AIO, custom water cooling loop, or maybe even the uh, uh, beefier model than this. This one was 60 bucks. This Be Quiet one was $60. It works fine. It's getting the job done. I think it's more than efficient considering that for $60, it's pretty decent. Now, if we put this in a case with some better airflow and maybe add some more fans, I think we'll manage. Now, just keep this in mind. This is kind of not a real world test in the sense that this is just primarily stressing the mess out of this CPU. Now, if you're gaming and you're gaming on a game that uses, uh, relies on a lot of CPU usage on it, these temperatures are not going to be there. I would probably say maybe 60 to 65. You might push 70 depending on your case. So you still got a leg, a lot of leg room. Now, if I wanted to do some overclocking on this, I'd probably got a little room to do some overclocking, but nothing extreme then i would upgrade to a definite beefier cooler but for what i'm trying to use and when get done with this this is actually going to work pretty well so is this a good idea to use this cpu cooler for it absolutely not i wouldn't even if you're just gonna kind of just use your computer for light use but who's going to spend 600 dollars on a cpu for light use i don't recommend using this one now keep this in mind i use an open test bench to kind of demonstrate this so the case is not a factor so we can't say that we're inhibiting airflow or anything like that this just kind of gives us an idea of how the cpu cooler holds up and this one like i said spiked up to 91 degrees so now put this in a case with restricted airflow or limited to no airflow and yeah, you'll probably be hitting the hundreds, thermal throttling. If not, CPU will shut down to preserve itself. So, yeah, not a good idea to use this one. So, comment down below. Let me know what you think of these two CPU coolers, which one you like, which one you would use, one that you would recommend your experience with it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see what we come up with next.